Let's go over the Pixel to P10 board from Experience Lights. The Pixel to P10 board allows you to control one or two 1 8 scan P10 panels directly from your Pixel string. There is no need for intermediate software or any other configuration or additional power supplies. This can be driven directly from your Pixel string. All you have to do is connect your 12 volt pixels up to the board and you are ready to go. So let's go over the board in more detail. First, on the bottom, you will see a three pin Phoenix connector. The ground pinned is on the left, data input or DI is in the middle, and 12 volt is on the right. This board features a built-in 5 volt, 5 amp buck converter to safely drop your 12 volts down to 5 volts that is used by your P10 panels. On the left is the screw terminals to provide power to your P10 panels. On the right, you will see a switch that allows you to choose between either one panel or two panels. If you are driving two panels, the next switch allows you to choose either a stacked orientation or a sideways orientation. Finally, the test button. Press and hold for one second to switch to test mode. Press and hold again to switch back to normal mode. So let's hook this up. The first thing we're going to do is attach our power supply cords to our P10 panels. If the connectors are too large, in this case, they were a little bit too wide, feel free to snip them so that they fit into the connector. We're going to um, take our power cords here and plug them into our panel supply. Here we're gonna screw this into the ground first. And we'll do our five volt next. Ensure you have a good solid connection on your power wires. Next, we're gonna connect our power to our P10 panel. We're gonna start with one for a demonstration. Here is a panel from Wired Watts. We're plugging in the power into the power jack such that the red goes to the VCC and the black goes to the ground. Notice on the back of this panel, the arrow is pointing up. This signifies when the panel is mounted, that should be in the up orientation. Next, we're going to connect the data line. You will see this port says J in. That is the input port. We're going to connect our cable from there to this port here on the Pixel 2 10 panel. Next thing we need to do is just attach our pigtail. And there we have it. You'll notice right away that our data LED is blinking and our power LED is lit. Our board is being powered from our five volt supply that is on board and it's getting its data. Currently the pixel controller that it's hooked up to is a Falcon F16 V3 and it is currently in test mode. All right, now we're gonna switch it from test mode into live mode, so we're getting live data from our network. And here we have butterfly with sparkles. Of course, what else would we use? All right, so that's easy enough. We have the switch set to one panel, and since it's only one panel, we don't have to worry about the two panel orientation. Now let's see what happens when we switch in test mode. When we switch into test mode, we can see that this is our top left, TL, and this is our bottom right, BR. Since there's only one panel, you can see a red perimeter around one single panel, signifying that is the entire frame that is being output for one panel. On the left here, you can see the color order. Now typically, this should be red, green, blue. You can see here, this is red, blue, green. So in our controller, we wanna make sure that we say that the output for this particular pixel string is RBG instead of RGB. This pixel order will tell you what to set on your controller such that it is in the right color order. Now what happens if we switch it to two panels? We can see here that the, in, the image is now incomplete. We have our top left, but we don't have anything for our bottom right. 
It says one, so this is our first panel. Um, so we need to add in our second panel. So let's do that now. We're gonna take another panel and the first thing we're gonna do is apply our power. Taking care to note that the black is going to ground and the red is going to VCC. Next, we're going to connect to the J out port of our first panel here. And we're gonna connect that to the J in port of our second panel. And you can see now that the image is now complete. The red perimeter signifies the outer outline of our image. So if they connect, we're good to go. We have our top left on the top left there and our bottom right on the bottom right. This allows you to make sure that your panels are orientated correctly. What if we wanted to orient them side by side? On the board, we're gonna switch from the stacked orientation to sideways. You'll notice now that the top left arrow is pointing over here. So now we would orient our panels such that they were side by side, thus completing the outline and top left, it's going here, bottom right is over here. What you'll wanna know is that the panels are always going to stay in the orientation signified on the back of the panels. What that means is up arrow is always up and it's, the data is always gonna move, be moving left to right when looked from the back. So if we have a side by side orientation, this is the way that it's going to go with the first panel on the left, the second panel on the right. However, when looking at them from the front, it's going to be in the sideways orientation. The second panel is on the left, the first panel is on the right. The indicators of top left TL and bottom right BR are there to make sure it's extremely obvious in which orientation these should go. So let's jump into X lights and see how you model this. All right, let's dive into X lights. The nice thing about the pixel to P10 board is that really all you need to do is draw a matrix in X lights and that is it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna model here is a pixel, um, a single P10 panel board. Okay, and uh, we know that that is uh, 16 rows and it is 32 pixels across. So it's a total of 512 pixels. And so we're gonna model this guy and this is just going to be our single P10 panel. That's it, we're done with that. Awesome. So the next one we're gonna do is two P10 panels. So, and we're gonna do two P10 panels side by side. And this one is gonna also be at start channel of one, just so that we're all starting from the same place. So we're gonna say this is for dual P P10 panels, <laughs> dual P10s. Um, and this is gonna be in the sideways orientation. And so instead of, um, 32 nodes across, we're gonna double that to 64 nodes across because we have two side by side. And there we go. Now we have two P10 panels side by side um, modeled in X lights. So the next thing we're gonna do is two panels that are in the uh, stacked orientation. So we'll call this start channel of one as well. And this is going to be stacked. Okay, so. Instead of 16 strings, we're gonna do 32, because we have 32 rows now. And since it's only one P10 panel wide, we're gonna be 32 across. So, and that didn't save. So we'll do 32 enter, 32 enter, there we go, okay. So this is going to be, um, it's gonna look like a square, because two P10 panels uh, stacked on top of each other is a square. All right, great. So there are our three models. We have our single P10 panel. We have a dual P10s. These are sideways and dual P10s stacked. All right, let's throw a test sequence on there and see what we can do. All right, we're gonna just do an animation. We'll do 40 frames a second. Now, even though I chose 40 frames a second, when this goes to the single P10, it'll be fine. But for these double P10 panels, that is gonna drop it down to 20 frames a second because it can't do 
1024 at 40 frames a second. So um, only this uh, P, uh, single P10 panel will actually be able to be done at 40 frames a second. The others will be 20. Okay, so let's first start out with a single P10 panel. Let's just throw on, um, we are outputting to lights. We have our butterfly effect on and there it is. So looks great. Wow, we've already done our first output to lights and that was pretty, pretty easy. All right, so next let's, let's change it to a sideways orientation. So these are our two side by side. Now we have two panels going side by side. All right, so what are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is we have output from X lights, two panels worth of data, um, but uh, we're currently seeing some, some weird artifacts. That's because our board is set to one panel and not to two. So it's actually reading in 64 pixels worth of data, but then it's wrapping to the next one. That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and change our panel to two. All right, well, we changed it to two, but it still doesn't look right. Well, that's because in X lights, we have a side-by-side -side orientation. Um, and so what we wanna do is change our two panel orientation to stacked, excuse me, to side-by-side. -side. And then if we put our panels in the proper orientation here, not a lot of room, um, you can see this is outputting what we're seeing in X lights. So side by side, and that's it. So side by side orientation looks great. Just need to make sure that whatever we're outputting from X lights is represented um, in our switches on the board here. Now, finally, let's take our sideways model here and we'll do stacked instead. So this is now a, a nice square and we have our pattern going from the top right down to the top left. We can see that movement here and we can see that reflected on the board. And that's it. All you need to do is make sure that you're configuring your matrices in X lights properly. And that's it. Throw whatever effects you want on there and you are good to go.